The Premier League can be a very unforgiving place as well as ruthless, and as a result it can be quite short term. The average lifespan of a Premier League manager in this day and age is roughly two seasons. You go beyond two seasons, you're doing a good job in the Premier League. Seeing high turnover of players in a summer transfer window is no longer unusual at Premier League clubs. Seven, eight first team players leaving and seven, eight coming in in one window. It doesn't matter anymore. The Premier League is so rich, they can afford that. Your record signing hasn't worked out. Sell them in a couple of seasons for half price. It doesn't matter. We can absorb the cost. But also because of the money within the Premier League, we can't afford to take risks and get out of the Premier League. We have to spend money to stay in. It's a very short-term, ruthless and expensive place to be. And as a result, I imagine one of the hardest jobs for a manager in the Premier League is to incorporate youth into your first team squad. It's deemed too risky by managers. Managers are one, two, three bad months away from the sack for a majority of the clubs. Not every manager in every club in the Premier League, but the majority of clubs they're a handful of bad games away from being on the brink of getting the sack because clubs can afford to sack those managers. How much will it cost? Eight million? That's fine. We can sack him. Let's get rid of him because the risk we can't afford to do is getting relegated. So I think one of the hardest jobs is to incorporate youth into your squad, taking players in over senior players who are on tens of thousands of pounds a week and worth up to tens of millions of pounds as well. Are you going to bring in an untried and untested 18, 19 year old and bench the 28, 29 year old who is a huge financial asset to that Premier League club, whereas the youngster is yet to become, may go on to become one, but it's risky. And as a result of all those things, I think one of the hardest jobs as a chairman, a director of football of a Premier League club now is A, finding a manager that will incorporate youth into your team, but B, making your manager incorporate youth into your first team squad. Because their job is at risk for a large part. It's risky for them, especially when we're dealing with defenders. And that's what we're dealing with now at West Ham in the case of Kaelin Casey. Now, it's good news for Casey. It's good news for Ollie Scarles. He's signed a new four-year contract. It's been good news this summer for Lewis Orford. And before that, we had Callum Marshall, George Earthy signing new contracts, long-term contracts at West Ham, with Mark Noble playing a prominent role in these youngsters committing their future. It was just over 12, this is scary, it was just over 12 months ago they won the FA Youth Cup. It feels like two years ago for some reason. I guess it's two seasons ago, now we're into the new season. So it's two seasons ago, but only 14, 15 months ago, not that long. That team's starting to get broken up a little bit. Some players in the under 21, some players out on loan, in the case of Obama, left West Ham. Some players possibly already been deemed not going to make it at West Ham. Others, the hopes are quite high from them. Just 14 months, yet for some of those players that won the FA Youth Cup in league with West Ham then, their careers are starting to go in different directions, which is natural. And if just two of those players can go on and make it at West and when I say make it, rack up over 100 appearances for West Ham, that will be a huge success. But how do we get to that point? Now, I think we've taken the first step in regards of Kaelin Casey. Now, I'm a bit sceptical because yesterday Lopetegui did his press conference ahead of the Fulham game and within there he said the market is closed. Now, that's good news as far as I'm concerned. Postman City, he was speaking about how you can still sign free agents. Between then and now, we obviously took John Egan on trial, had talks with Joel Matip, possibly tried to sound out Matt Hummels before he went to Roma. But we were certainly in the market for a centre-back. I think that's fair. We took John Egan in on trial to have a look at him. Now, at the end of it, we decided not to offer him a contract and he's gone and signed for Burnley instead. Now, Lopetegui's comments would suggest that that's it. We're not bringing in any more free agents. This is good news as far as I'm concerned because hopefully, keyword, hopefully, it presents an opportunity for Casey to become the fourth choice centre-back. Whether he does or not, I don't know. I'm a bit apprehensive and I don't, I don't quite believe that that will be the case if we were missing, say, Kilman and Mavapanos. Will it be Tadebo and Casey at the back? I'm not sure. I think we might see Alvarez and Tadebo prior to Casey coming in. But worst case scenario for him, he'll be in and around the first team. He was on the bench against Manchester City. And this is progress. This is good. Because I've criticised previous West Ham managers, plural, for not giving youngsters an opportunity at the club. 
I think in the case of Sam Allardyce, he threw them under the bus in that FA Cup game. You want youngsters? There you go. They're not good enough. Well, maybe if you only put in one, um, they might have coped. But regardless, and I just feel like the pathway has been blocked a little bit. Now, the, the old argument will always be, well, who's left West Ham and gone on and make it? That's not necessarily what I'm discussing here. What I'm discussing today is the pathway to the first team and how A, it must be difficult, and B, we've got to do better at West Ham. We're the ones that claim we're the academy of football. It's time to see it. And if we brought in John Egan, that would have sent the wrong message as far as I'm concerned. That would have sent the opposite message, which is don't bother. Now, I'm a little bit sceptical because we tried to get in a centre-back and sign up and go for it. So it doesn't necessarily mean we wanted KC to be that fourth-choice centre-back. We wanted it to be someone else. The good thing is we've looked at someone like John Egan and thought, no, we'll go with what we've got, thank you. That is positive. Whether he gets an opportunity or not remains to be seen. Now, I've been impressed by the, for now, the Lopetegui and Steiden thing. I've got no complaints whatsoever, but it's early days yet. However... There is another relationship at the club I need to see start working before I think youngsters can get an opportunity. But before we discuss this, I want to point you in the direction of this video's sponsors, Manscaped. Now, I'm going to have to go and get Manscaped myself. The good thing is I'll be using my own code. The code, by the way, is Hammers Chat Pubes, all one word. You'll save 20% off everything, plus free shipping worldwide. But the reason I'm going to have to go and buy a tool on Manscaped is because... In the last month or so, I found a couple of long hairs in my ear. It's, 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 it's annoying. Not the end of the world. Tweezers, right? Not the end of the world. I'm getting old. This is a con. I assume this is a consequence of getting old. Do not like it. So I will be purchasing the Weed Whacker. So next month, you're going to get my own personal review of the Weed Whacker, which is for your ears and your nose hairs. But Manscaped are the leaders in male grooming and they have all the tools you need for removing and maintaining hair on your body, from head to toe and everything in between. Weed Whacker, tick, beard trimmer, tick, cologne, tick, boxers, tick, lotion for looking after your ball sack, tick. But of course, they've got the Lawnmower 5 as well, which is the best in the game when it comes to removing those pubes. Remember, gentlemen, Cut the grass, make the tree look bigger. And also remember your code, Hammers Chat Pubes, all one word, 20% off, free shipping worldwide. But back to the topic. And the relation I want to discuss is between Mark Noble and I guess Tim Steinin, but also Lopetegui. Mark Noble's role is, part of it is to secure the future of the promising youngsters at West Ham. That is it, retain the talent, which has proven difficult. Manchester City have yet again poached another youngster from the academy, it's going to be hard when teams like that come knocking and take your 14, 15 year olds and the contracts are easy to get out of as well. So his job is difficult to some extent. But when it comes to the likes of Oli Scarles, George Earthy, Callum Marshall, he has to secure the futures of the players he thinks could make it at West Ham United or at worst may not make it but retain transfer value and there's nothing wrong with that so if we decide they're not good enough for West Ham but we're going to sell them and that money that comes in goes back into the academy and helps with the running of the academy and there's no shame in that these players are going and play League 1, League 2 it's an incredible achievement I've never understood perhaps his snobbery oh what's that guy achieved what's he achieved he's got a full time career playing professional football it's incredible but if West Ham can start selling these players they all add up, even if you're only getting 100, 200, 300,000, but you're selling a few a season, the academy is then running at no cost to the club. And as we know, it costs 7, 8 million for West Ham to run that academy per season. So it's an expensive business. Mark Noble's job has to be to generate players, but also generate revenue. But he's securing the future of a lot of these players. We didn't move Mubama. He rejected that contract, joined Manchester City, but the club got 1.2, 1, depending on where you, what you read, between 1.2 and 1.5 million. That's a lot of money for a player that had had a handful of first team appearances. We'll see what he goes on to achieve, but that's part of Noble's job. He's doing that part. The second part has to be to clear a pathway to the first team. Give these players an opportunity, give them something that says, look, you can make it here at West Ham. Because this is the first season, to my memory, I'm in my mid 30s, but to my memory, this is the first season that we are going to register our Premier League squad and there's not going to be a player registered from the West Ham Academy. And I think that's sad. I think that's a failure. 
Now, that's been cheated a little bit in the past because we've had Mark Noble for so long. Pretty much my entire adulthood, I've had Mark Noble in there. Post Mark Noble, I had Ben Johnson and Declan Rice for a part of it. We've had the likes of Connor Commentary. But last season, we obviously had Ben Johnson. And Trot, uh, not Trot, sorry, Anang. Anang was there as well. So we had players from the academy. This season, none. No players registered. And that, that makes me sad, and that's something we've got to try and rectify. But there's only so much Noble can do in terms of clearing a pathway. Because Tim steiden has got his job which is to recruit players and retain first team players so that the head coach has got everything he needs at his disposal to go and achieve success at West Ham. Ch Tim's job is player recruitment. But there has to be a dynamic between Noble and Steiden. So Noble saying this guy could make it at West Ham, this guy could be an option, like Caelan Casey. This is where steiden has got to say, OK, he will be one of the centre-backs this season. But... The problem is they may not agree. They may not have the same opinion on the same player. It could be that Martin Noble thinks George Earthy will be good enough for West Ham a couple of years' time. Steiden might be looking at him going, I don't think he will be. So I'm going to go and get someone to play that role in two years' time. They need to work together. Now, I'm pleased with what Noble's doing in terms of retaining these players. I'm pleased with the recruitment that Steiden's done. In fact, that Lopetegui seems to be getting along with him. It's early days, yeah, but I've got no complaints about that relationship so far. But the one that we do need to improve is getting these youngsters an opportunity. And an opportunity is the key word here. Now, of course, Noble and Tim can do all they want. Ultimately, it comes down to Lopetegui. He may use Casey, he may not. We'll wait and see. But I just like that part of his job is to start giving the youngsters an opportunity. Now, when I say an opportunity, I mean a real chance. And I appreciate people are going to say, hang on a minute, which players have left that have gone on to do anything? That's not my argument here. My argument here is giving the youngsters an opportunity to find out if they're good enough or not at West Ham. We've all got stories and examples. Glenn Johnson is the one that always sticks out to me. They, they, didn't, they didn't even know if he'd be good enough. And suddenly, bang, there he was. A few seasons later, winning Premier League titles. Sometimes it's right place, right time. But in previous seasons... Going back, other managers as well. Because if here's a list of all the players that's had their debut at West Ham under this manager. Hang on a minute. That doesn't mean anything. That means what it says. Debuts under manager. That is it. One game. That's it. Debut does not equal opportunity. An opportunity is keeping that youngster in around the first team for the season. Putting him in. If he plays well, leave him in. Doesn't play well. Take him out. Work with him. Put him back in. Give him numerous chances. Not just one debut usually in a game that means nothing or has little going on it so we've already won the Europa League group on oh, match day six we'll put them in that is good by the way I'm not dismissing that it's good it's fun but off the back of that what can we do how can we build on that one and I just want to see that change at West Ham it is hard it is difficult but it has to be something that we can turn into a success. Otherwise, what's the point of everything? But the good news this week is that Casey will hopefully have some form of opportunity. Scarls has signed a four-year contract. That's good news. I'm intrigued to see how he gets on because that was the youngster Moyes backed. Moyes backed Scarls before anyone else. Uh, Mubama was in around the first team more due to injuries. But when Scarls was 16, David Moyes was taking him with the first team. And that's prominent that's important that is because I don't think Moyes gave as many youngsters an opportunity as he perhaps could have done but he was willing to give Scarls one and if it wasn't for injuries I do wonder if Scarls would be further on as to where he is today who knows like I said right place right time sometimes wrong place wrong time but Moyes had faith in Scarls and that's important but it feels like his progress has been halted because of injuries. He's come back this season now after missing at the end of last season. Playing in midfield now. Now when ex West employee did his update saying he signed a four-year contract, he's seen as the long-term successor to Creswell slash Emerson. That's good. But then why is he playing in midfield for the under-21s? If, if we think his long-term future at West Ham is going to be playing as a left-back, then surely we want to be playing him left-back in the under-21s. Maybe I'm talking nonsense. I probably am. But I just want to see succession. I just want to see a plan. 
last season, the under-21s were playing completely different to the first team. It was a different formation, different style of football, different formation. How how were the youngsters ever going to bridge that gap when it's completely two, it's two different teams almost? We're the same club. We should be playing the same way. This under-21s, under-18s, they should be basing their tactics on what the first team are doing so that when they do get called up, no problem. Right, I, I know what to do. Left back, yeah, I know the role of a left back. We do it at under twenty ones. You gotta make that move, that jump, as seamless as possible. And I don't think we're doing that at the minute at West Ham. And that's something I find a little bit frustrating actually. But hopefully Scarls goes on and smashes it. It's good to see the youngsters going out on loan as well. Earthy's obviously picked up an injury, which is a bit frustrating really. He only got he's only had two appearances, um, at Bristol City, five minutes, ten minutes. Then he's got injury. Kyle Marshall, a bit more of a successful start for him. A couple of goals for Huddersfield. Was playing for Northern Ireland on the international break. Started the first game in which they won. Came off the bench in the second game, which they lost. But Marshall, it's early September. But Marshall feels like he could be onto a good thing with this loan move to Huddersfield. Uh, Patrick Kelly involved with under twenty ones uh, for Northern Ireland. So he'll be going back to, to Doncaster now. So hopefully we've got our youth players out on good loans this season. Fingers crossed. But even if they do fantastically well and they come back to West Ham, there has to be something else ready for them. Lewis Offords, the one, the talking point at the minute, you know, signed a, a long-term deal after Tim Snyden tried to flog him to Aston Villa, which, by the way, I'm not having this PR stuff right. Last week it was The Athletic did it. And it mentioned about how Tim Steinman played a pivotal role in securing Lewis Orford's. I'm not. I'm not having that. He was trying to. Say, he was using him as bait for Aston Villa to try and get John Duran. And um, now I'm pleased Orford has signed a new deal. He's the one that I think could go on and make it West Ham. Personally, unsure about the rest of them. Orford is the, my number one pick, if you like. So I'm pleased that he's committed his future to West Ham. Um, what we do next with him is important. Do we leave him on the on 21s, captain's armband, central midfield? There you go, build a team around him, or do we put him out on loan in January? And I think it has to be the loan one because we've seen enough players stick around under 21s in recent seasons and not make that jump into the first team. Mubama being the biggest one, where he smashed under under 18, did all right under 21s, didn't play too much because he was a first team squad player, so he wasn't picking up any minutes anywhere, and it just felt like. His, complete, his career like flatlined at West Ham in the last 12 months or so. We can't afford that with anyone else. Now, Mubama had that contract situation. That definitely played its part. It got political, and that's an ugly thing in football. It's, regardless of age, but especially a youngster. I think just writing off a young player's... A season of a young player's career due to him not signing a contract. So he wouldn't sign a contract because he wanted... Game time, and we wouldn't give him game time because he wouldn't sign the contract. What an ugly, horrible situation to be in. As a result, he didn't get game time, and he wouldn't sign the contract. Now, I'm not saying we should have gave him the minutes, etc. But my point is, the situation was ugly, and it's just a waste of time for West Ham, and it's just a waste of time for Mubama. Yes, we've got the one and a half million, but. If he goes on to become a ten and a half million pound player, we've really missed out, haven't we? We can't afford to get these players' careers wrong for the sake of them. And I think a result of that has to be Noble getting things up and running, Steiden buying into what Noble wants, and also Lopetegui. Because it's short term versus long term. Kale and Casey, I've got no doubt, will maybe be cause problems short term. If he was to play, I'd imagine he'll make mistakes. It might even cost us a few goals, which may lead to points. Financially, a costly thing. Two million pound per position in the Premier League. So even if you finish 11th instead of 10th, the club miss out on two million. That's a lot of money. However, long term, it could be very beneficial because if Casey does go on to make it, you've got a player worth millions on your hands. That two million missed out on, don't worry about it. Casey's gone up by three, four million in market value. He could go on and become a first-team player for West Ham. We don't know. But you've got to send a message to these young lads. When you're trying to get the likes of Lewis Orford to commit to your future, you want to be able to point to a player and say, well, look what he's done. At the minute, there's nobody. And that makes me 
a little bit sad and it's something we hopefully can rectify because if the players we're picking up and we're bringing through aren't good enough then we've got an issue somewhere it's just further down the food chain the scouts the coaches in the academy they're then the issue but I just find it hard that the under 18s can smash it and none of them are good enough for West Ham I find that hard to believe like I said we only need two arguably we only need one but if we could get two players to go on and play tens of appearances for West Ham that would be a huge huge success but we've got to get everything at the club right in order for that to happen that's a big ask but it's not impossible anyway there you go that's my rambling for Friday if you enjoyed this video please do drop a like on by clicking thumbs up subscribe to Hammers chat we're live at 1.55 tomorrow with the build up to the Fulham game if you go into the game enjoy it one pound a drink uh, Fulham one pound a pint before the game before 2pm tomorrow and that could be carnage couldn't it but if you're not going to the game we're live at 1.55 and I'd love you to come and join us in the live chat I'll see you then